the wisest man who ever lived, said there's a time for everything under the sun. So what time is it right now? Well, look at the world. Look at what's happening in America right now. And it's not hard to imagine how things could get pretty crazy pretty quickly. 2020 has been a year for the record books. And so what do we do right now? In Matthew 24, Jesus talks about all the signs that happened before his second coming. And he says, just like how the fig tree matures, and you can tell by the change in the leaves that the time of harvest is near, it'll be the same way with the Son of Man. And then he tells a parable about ten virgins and how the virgins um, were bridesmaids and they went out to wait for the bridegroom. And in, in ancient times, the, the bridesmaid's job was to light the lamps and to show the way for the bridal procession as the, the groom went to the bride's house and he got her and he took her back to his house where there was the big party. And this happened in the middle of the night usually. And there were no street lights or lamps. And so the bridal party would hold the lamps and light the way. Well, Jesus tells the story and he says that five virgins had oil for their lamps. They had fuel for the light and five didn't. And just this last week, my pastor was talking about this sermon and he said, you know, the five who didn't have the oil, it was because they didn't actually expect the bridegroom to come. You see, they were just going through the motions. They're like, yeah, sure, we're a part of the bridal party. We'll come and uh, we'll wait with you guys, but he's not coming tonight. Maybe tomorrow, maybe later this week, but not tonight. So they weren't prepared. And then the bridegroom shows up and, and the foolish ones don't have any oil. And they're like, here, give me oil. And oil, there's not enough to go around and to share. So what time is it for us? You see, we're waiting for the bridegroom to come back. And there's two types of people who are waiting for him. Actually, there's three types. One type doesn't even care. They're, they're totally checked out. But for the people who are waiting, there's those of us who believe that he's coming back very soon and we're trying to get ready. And there's those of us who are just going through the motions. I've heard people say, yeah, I know 2020 has been bad, but hasn't world history always been bad? I mean, that doesn't mean that Jesus is coming back soon. I mean, we've got time. Time to do what? Time to play around? Time to distract ourselves on our phones? See, we don't have time to waste. If Jesus is coming back in five months or five years, we've got a lot to do. And our job, our mission, starts with worship. You see, we've gone through the first angel's message. Fear God, give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. And the last part says, worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that's in them. Worship the creator. And there's a lot packed into that verse. The whole idea of his being the creator points us back to creation and how the last day of creation, God said, rest, just rest on the Sabbath. And it's a beautiful command because it's reminding us that we can't work our way into heaven. We can't be good enough. We're just supposed to rest and think about all the great things God has done for us. See, many people in the Christian world, they don't keep the Sabbath. They keep the first day of the week and they do it because that's a, a celebration of Jesus's resurrection. But Jesus didn't tell us to keep Sunday for his resurrection. He told us to be baptized to commemorate his resurrection. And so the worship, the creator, it, it reminds us to obey God, even if the world isn't. It reminds us to, to focus on him as the creator and to rest in his good works because if he can create the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, then he can recreate you and me into his likeness. You see, before we can spread the gospel, it has to change our hearts. Before we can be a light, we have to be lit. 
before we can pour out blessings on other people, we must first be filled. And that starts with worship. And it's not a checklist of, I read my Bible for 10 minutes, I, I went to a Bible study, I went to church, check, 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 I'm good. No, that's, that's working your way. Worship is focus. It's a laser-like focus on God. And who is God? Well, he's a God who needs to be respected, who needs to be held in awe, who needs to be given glory. And when we worship, it changes us. It ennobles us. It gives us bravery. How was David able to face Goliath? Well, he had worshiped God. He wrote Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He wrote that worshiping God, and when he faced the giant, he could stand. Daniel went to the lion's den, but what did he do every day, three times a day before the lion's den? He worshiped. He opened his windows, and he faced Jerusalem, and he prayed to God. So what is the time for us right now? Let me tell you what it's not the time for. This is not the time to panic. This is not the time to complain. This is not the time to think about what could happen and, and get worked up. This is not the time to hate. Matthew 24 says at the end of time, men's love will grow cold and they will be filled with hate. And if you look at our world now, liberals hate Trumpers and, and, and Republicans hate the crazy liberals and there's so much hate going around. We're not called to hate. In fact, Jesus told us to love our enemies, even if they vote for the wrong guy. He told us to love our enemies, even if they want to take away our freedoms. He told us to love our enemies, even if they're unlovable. But that's impossible. But Paul says, all things are possible with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, to get that all things, you got to go through Christ. And that through Christ is worship. It's time to worship. I've been doing these videos with you guys for a really long time now. And I just feel like God's calling me to take some time to unplug to get off my social media and to worship. The news is stressing me out. The, the things that are happening in the world are, and God's like, you know what, Grant, take a break and just focus on me. I don't know what God's calling you to do, but he's calling me to put away my regular books and get into my Bible a little bit deeper. He's calling me to put away my social media and, and these Facebook posts for a time and get into him because he wants to tell me something that I need before I go into my future. And so today, I, I, I'm not saying follow me and do what I do. I'm saying go to God and say, God, what do you need me to do? You see, Moses, when he was talking to the burning bush and, and Jesus was talking to him out of the burning bush, God said, take off your shoes for you stand on holy ground. You see, Moses' shoes were separating him from the holy ground and God told him what he needed to remove so that he could connect with God. And right now God's telling me to take off the shoes of my social media and my books and things that I'm doing with my mind and, and focus on him. And so I want to challenge you to ask God, what is it time for me to do now? What are you calling me to do or to stop doing? What shoes do I need to take off so that I can connect with you? Because you don't need me and my videos to connect with God. He knows what you need to let go of and what you need to pick up. There's a, a men's challenge I did called Soul Con and it's souls under control of the Holy Spirit. And, and in that idea in there, um, they said you have to put down the fork that feeds your flesh and pick up the cross that feeds your soul. What is God calling you to lay down? What is he calling you to pick up? Now the specifics, he's gonna let you know. But the general idea of what he's calling all believers to do is to worship the creator. Worship the creator. Worship will transform us. 
It'll give us the courage to say God's got this. It'll give us the strength to stand in the storm. I believe Jesus is coming back very soon. And now is the time, church, when we need to pray and ask God to heal our blindness, to, to put ointment on our wounds, to give us his robe of righteousness, to cover our nakedness and our filthy rags. Now is the time to worship. May God bless you as you take off your shoes, as you stand on holy ground, and as you realize in the deepest part of your soul that God's got this. God bless you.